I warn you, this video will be all over the place for Rhymes accessories. Starting off with her earrings, I use a pair of my favorite hoops to get the approximate size I want, trace that onto paper, and then go in with a compass to draw more precise circles. I left maybe a quarter inch of space in between, which serves as part of the outline. Then I use my ruler to draw lines in the middle for the Pokeball look and use some eye cream containers for the center jewel. I also had the earring studs nearby and used them to mark where they would be glued so I know to have a little more material there. Next, I go in with an X-Acto knife to cut out the paper pattern. I cut out the center jewel first since that will be a separate material and then go in to cut out the earring pattern exactly. Before I cut it out all the way, I use a little transparent tape to fill in where the center jewel was. After that, I transfer the pattern to Warbler and make my markings with a Sharpie marker. I like using the neon markers on the dark Warbler since they show up a little bit better than the black ones and I haven't found fine tip metallic ones yet. I use my ruler again to clean up any spots that I may have gotten a little messy on and then cut everything else out with an X-Acto knife, being sure to take my time around those curves. The inner portions I cut out and set aside as I had learned a really neat trick for using the warbler scraps. With the warbler scraps, I heated them up and molded them together to make the center jewel. I found this trick via Ludus Cosplay, who is a certified warbler master and incredible cosplayer. I had intended to make the jewel base out of clay and wait for it to dry before I moved on to forming a mold, but this tip literally saved me about three days of work.
Molding Warbler is easy, but it does require a careful hand as you don't want to hurt yourself. I continued to heat the Warbler, mold it, and added small pieces as needed to get the thickness and size I wanted. Then I matched it against the paper portion of that jewel pattern to ensure that it was the right circular shape. Next up, it was time to prime. I like using the Luxury Metal Plasti Dip for anything that is going to have a metallic finish. The accessories needed just two light coats on each side. While the Plasti Dip dried, it was time to work on molding the center jewel. If you haven't seen yet, there's a lot of multitasking during this process as the best time to do something is while the other thing's paint is drying. I use the Illuminite two-part putty mold, mixing the pieces together until they begin to get warm, then molding them around the center jewel. I did this twice so I could cast two resin pieces simultaneously. Speaking of resin, this is one of my favorite things to do. For my two-part resin casting, I'm old school with water measurements to determine how much resin I'll need. I'll use the Illuminite Clear Class Resin and give it gentle stirs first for both parts, then add two drops of turquoise to tint it to what I want it to be. Then it's time to pour the resin into the mold. I always bring an extra mold in case I pour too much resin. Moving the resin to a safe place, it's time to paint the earrings. Nothing fancy, just metallic gold paint. Then, when the paint is dried, it's time to add the back post to the earrings. I use two-part epoxy resin glue for this. Please be sure to do this in a well-ventilated area. So gloves are recommended. I mixed the two parts and then got moving. You also have to be quick for this as the epoxy resin dries rapidly. Since it's been a few days for the jeweled resin to cure, it's time to demold it and sand down any rough edges. The thin layer of overwrap at the edge of the mold I was able to cut off, and then with a low grit piece of sandpaper, sanded down any harsh or rough edges.
After that, with the paper piece of the jewel pattern, I marked indentations of where the earring would rest. I want to sandwich the jewel pieces around the earring so that it floats. Then I use my Dremel and an engraving attachment to cut into the back of the jewel center on both sides. Off camera, I coated the jewel centers in some clear UV epoxy resin and cured them under a UV light. Then it was time to glue the jewel centers onto the earring bases. I placed one center face down and then the earring base on top of that, making sure that the middle pieces fit into the grooves that I had cut. Mixing more epoxy resin, I added it to the other jewel center piece and sandwiched it together with some painter's tape holding them in place. Again, moving quickly so the glue doesn't harden faster than I'm working. While that fully cures, it's time to move to Rhyme's necklace. I cut out some square pieces from a note card, measuring how big I wanted them to be. Maybe an inch and a quarter for the center piece, and then an inch for the other portion. I then used a ruler to draw a single line and then mark where they would be on a piece of EVA foam, then went in with the ruler and a fine tip sharpie again to draw the full lines for each piece. Lastly, with another ruler and an X-Acto knife, I cut off the excess foam and cut out each piece individually, using the ruler to make the cuts to keep all of the lines and angles straight.
Once the pieces were cut, I used my Dremel and a regular sanding attachment to bevel the edges some, rounding them off so that the angles weren't as stark. If you ever paid attention to when I made my son's static shock cosplay, this is the same method that I use for his utility belt. Afterwards, it's time to prep for heat sealing and paint. I used masking tape and some scrap cardboard to lay out where I wanted each foam piece to be, making sure that there's ample space between and so that the pieces don't fly all over the place before I use the heat gun. I went over them with the heat gun briefly to seal all the pores and then used a thin needle to poke a hole in the upper corners of each piece. This is where the metal connectors would pierce the foam and chain together. Doing this right after the heat gun is super effective since the foam is softer and easier to manipulate. Once everything had cooled down, I went in with some gesso and a wide paint brush to prime each of the pieces. I have learned that the cheaper quality foam doesn't take to plasti dip as well on its own, and a few coats of gesso will do wonders. Plus, it really seeps into any open pores of the foam so that you can paint more evenly. Thanks to Fancy Gen Cosplay for the tip on using gesso. With the gesso applied and dried, now we can apply a dip without fear of it bubbling up or not being spread evenly. Again, the luxury metal finish is my favorite for a metallic look, especially since this is supposed to mimic jewelry. Back to the earrings. The resin has cured and it's time to seal everything with Mod Podge. Depending on the item, I will use a different type of Mod Podge. I like gloss for high shine items and satin for regular luster. The earrings came out great and I'm so proud of them for being so identical to what Rhyme wears.
Same finishing method for the necklace pieces, Mod Podge on top. Did you know that Mod Podge directions often call for five coats to finish? That blew my mind during this cosplay project. Then with needle nose pliers and jewelry clasp, I opened the hoops up, laced them through the jewelry pieces, and began to chain out Rhyme's necklace. I had a lot of this left over from my Catwoman cosplay when I made her belt. Piercing from the back foam jewelry piece to the front proved to be easier than going from the front to back since the hole was made from the front as it was. If I were to do this again, I might use a slightly wider needle to give the chains more mobility. The necklace is done and it came out fantastic. I'm very proud of myself too. Two last things, Rhyme's hat and her microphone. For the hat, I bought a black snapback from Amazon. However, I taped and bagged the rest of the cap to where the only thing exposed was the back strap. I went at this with some gold spray paint and touched it up with a gold paint pen. Lastly, for the microphone, I bought a Bluetooth Pokeball from eBay, a cheap handheld microphone that I disassembled, and some wireless microphones from Amazon. The goal is to put the wireless piece into the big one that I hollowed and have sound coming from the Pokeball. For Rhyme's microphone, I taped off some of the pieces of the shell first to build patterns. Then I used some foam clay to make the gold detail portions and the button on the microphone. I rolled it out a few times to get the thickness and sharp points that I wanted.
After that, I transferred the microphone tape pieces to paper and cut those out before transferring them to EVA foam. This was two half circles to serve as the dome cover and a long piece to go around that for design. Because I still wanted the microphone to be able to transmit sound, I made the dome piece a little loose so that it could pull off and push on as needed. Her microphone is made to look like a little skull, so I opted to go for a little monster shape and then filled in the gaps and smoothed the edges with more foam clay. The eyes of the monster were just scraps from other foam cuts that I made. Painting took place at the same time that I was painting her shoes and I glued the gold details and the button to the microphone shell, taping them in place. The shell was already black, so there was no struggle there other than applying a coat of Mod Podge on everything and the wireless microphone fit perfectly inside the main case.
Because of the multitasking mission that I was on, I didn't get video of me finishing the microphone exactly. But all in all, the accessories came out very well and helped to make the cosplay just that much better. This concludes the walkthrough videos for this character, and I'm so grateful that you spent the time to watch. Enjoy a few photos from her photo shoot, and I'll see you in the next video.